Now we're ready to start our tool pass, but before we do that, I want you to make sure that you're in the right plane. If we go to Planes, Named Views, and pick our tilted top front plane, you'll see that the top is WCS and the tool and construction plane is tilted top front side. Now I want you to be aware of the fact that if you were to right click and go to an isometric view, it's going to reset that back to top. So you need to make sure you're in the right plane when you're picking your, for your tool path. So let's go back and pick that again. Now we're going to go to our tool paths. Now there are several different types of tool paths we can use to cut this bulk of material off the corner here. We're going to explore a few of those different possibilities. The first tool path we're going to look at is a face because when a lot of people look at this they see that as just a face that needs to be milled off. I'm going to go with the default name for the toolpath file and to select my boundary I'm going to be picking off the solid. I want to pick an edge and I want to pick this as a loop so make sure face is not selected. And I'm going to pick this front edge right here and you can see it selected that face or that loop all the way around. Okay that. And now we'll go pick a tool. I'm going to say select library tool and I'm going to go to my filter and I'm going to tell it that I want to see none except face mills. And I'm going to grab a four inch face mill. and we'll add a comment and we'll say mill the tilted front face. Now we may also want to play with some of these speeds and feeds. I don't want to go at one inch a minute. What I'm going to do is modify this tool. I'm going to right click on the tool and say edit tool. We're going to go to the parameters for this. The First thing I want to tell it is that this tool has eight teeth or eight flutes. Now when it calculates speeds and feeds from a material or from any other factors on this page, it's going to go by some of these percentages and I'm going to set everything to 100%. We can also just put our feed rate, plunge rate, and retract rate directly in here if we wanted to. But I want to show you how to change it using these. So we're going to OK this. And now we're going to tell it that we want to run this at 1600 RPM. Well, it still took this one ten thousandth of an inch per tooth times the 1600 RPM to come up with this. It's still working with that same feed rate. I don't want to go at one tenth per tooth. We're going to be machining aluminum, so I'm going to say three and a half thousandths per tooth, or maybe three thousandths per tooth. So at three thousandths per tooth, 8 teeth, 1600 RPM, we get 38 inches a minute. Because we're never going to be taking the full width of cut, so this face mill should have no problem doing that. Let's take a look at our cut parameters. How do we want it to face mill this? Well, we could have it go in one direction, or I can have it do a zigzag move. Zigzag is going to go back and forth over that face. As it moves back and forth over that face, we can also tell it how to move between those cuts. The loop that you see here is the high speed loop. It's a more desirable way to do it. Otherwise you would get a square corner between those moves. For our depth cuts, we'll tell it that we want to take depth cuts of 220 thousandths per cut and we'll take one finish cut of 35 thousandths at the final depth. For our linking parameters, I want to set a real high clearance on here because I want it to go up to this clearance before this part indexes. This is what's going to keep the part from hitting the tool when the rotary table turns. I'm going to set that to 8 inches. For my retract height, I'll set that to a half. Feed plane, 200 thousandths. And for my top of stock, I want it to be at this point this point is the highest peak on the corner. Now that's actually measured from the center of the rotary table 
up to that point. When this face is brought up flat or even with the top of the table. My depth is incremental zero, which is exactly where the geometry sits, right on that face. We're going to take a look at our planes, and this is what you should be seeing. Work coordinate system should say top. Tool plane and construction plane should both say tilted top front side. If they don't, you can reselect them in here. If you can't select these, you may have to turn off the display relative to WCS. This should be unchecked. So with all these settings, we're going to say OK. Now we've got an error that comes up here. It says error compensating the stock boundary set across and along overlaps to at least 50%. Let's OK that. And here it says toolpath generation failed. Do you want to save this operation? Well, yes I do, because I just put a lot of work into setting up those parameters. So now I can go back into these parameters, go to my cut parameters, and it said to set this to 50% or higher. OK that, and regenerate. So it's coming across that face and then looping around and then cutting back across that face. Well, that face really isn't that wide, and we've got a 4-inch face mill. So there's probably a way we could take that with one cut, but that's not our biggest concern. One of the things we have to think about is how this part is going to be set up. It's going to be on the face of a rotary table. So we have to make sure that when that tool moves off the back of that part, that it's not going to hit the chuck on that rotary indexer. Right now, this is coming at least four inches off the back side of this part. And if we come four inches off the back side, there's a good chance we're going to hit something. And that may not be what we want to do. So we want to look at altering this toolpath a little bit. Let's go back into our parameters, and here we can change the roughing angle. So instead of cutting at zero degrees, front to back, or back to front, we can change this to 90 degrees. We'll regenerate that. Now, it's still going to be overlapping that edge by at least the radius of the tool, so it's two inches over the edge, but that's better at least.